In this country, we celebrate the party person, the extrovert who always has a crowd around him at a gathering, hanging on his every word. The introvert, on the other hand, is often derided as the party pooper, the one who leaves the nightclub early, or who doesn't even want to go anywhere near a nightclub with the gang. Why is that? What is it about the glad-handing good old boys or girls that makes them everyone's favorite party guest? and the introvert, the forgotten one. The benefits and gifts of introverts aren't as visible as extroverts. That's Todd Cashton, professor of psychology at George Mason University. He's also a researcher on happiness, meaning in life, and strength, and author of the book, The Upside of Your Dark Side. When you talk about charisma and you talk about leadership, what people often think of is their icons that are very visible. So you look at three and four sword generals in the army. You look at the Michael Jordans owning the basketball court. You're looking at you know Bill Clinton, who in any situation appears to be calm, relaxed, and can just field questions effortlessly and entertain people, even though that's not even his job. His job is basically to lead the free society when he was president. And what we forget is you have all these introverted leaders – if you think of like Nelson Mandela and Gandhi, you know, here you have people that are – it's from their lack of reacting to other people. That's their leadership is they're basically modeling strengths of prudence, of being cautious, of being in control of your emotions and resisting impulses. And as a society, that's harder to sell than the idea is that you are attractive, electric, and exciting. Cashton says introverts are often misjudged as antisocial or misanthropic when they're nothing of the kind. Introverted people are individuals who are more apt to wanting to be on their own, are overstimulated by their environment, and feel more recharged and energized when they're away from other people. It's not that they're not sociable. It's not that they don't have social skills. It's not that they're anxious around other people. It's just that they're very easily overstimulated and their energies are more recharged when they're on their own. So does that mean they're shy? Sophia Dembling says no. Dembling is an introvert and author of the book The Introvert's Way, Living a Quiet Life in a Noisy World. The difference is shyness is a behavior. It's fear. It's when you want to be around people, but you're fearful and inhibited around people. And shyness is, in fact, an obstacle to success. It can be a problem. It can be changed. Introversion, on the other hand, is motivation. It's how much you want and need and desire to be around people. Demling agrees with Cashton that introverts often get a bad rap because they seem stuck up and standoffish. That's another mistake they make because we don't put it all out there. We're not out there meeting and greeting and glad-handing. We tend to like to sit back and watch the activity around us. We seem reserved. We are reserved. And people assume that when you're not participating, you're judging, which is absolutely not the case. It's simply that's the way we are. We're quiet. We do like people perfectly well. We tend to like small groups of people. You know, I say I like people fine. I like them so much I want to actually have a conversation as opposed to being in a big Putin-any business affair. If you're quiet, people are able to put their own interpretations on your behavior on you. As Cashton said earlier, introverts can become overwhelmed by their environment and not just by the people in the room. Some introverted people are shy and some people are introverted are dominant, great storytellers and hilarious. It's just that the point at which they're saturated where they've reached enough satisfaction being around people is quicker than your extroverted, sociable, gregarious, hyper-friendly person. So they're very highly sensitive to noises, to fragrances, to sounds, and just the amount of energy it's required to socialize with another person, it can be overwhelming. Because they are more sensitive, are they better at certain things than people who aren't introverts? Cashton says they are good observers. People that are introverted are very good at being able to recognize and label what they're feeling, how other people make them feel, and have this great attunement to be able to empathize with what other people are experiencing. They can read people's cues really quickly. You know, just the softness in someone's musculature around their eyes, they'll recognize they seem tired. They might seem sad, where someone that's extroverted might not notice those little cues because they're focusing in general, are we connecting right now? 
So it's more at this grand level as opposed to, wow, it looks like your arms are sagging and you're walking a little bit more slowly than is usual to you. So someone that's introverted picks up these small cues, and that's a really beautiful social strength. A lot of people you see on TV and in the movies are introverts. Dembling says that Steve Martin, Julia Roberts, Johnny Depp, and Kristen Stewart are among them. Cashton says that some actors and actresses use their craft to create the best of both worlds. The thing about actors and actresses is a number of them like playing these highly social roles because they get to live two worlds, because it's exactly diametrically opposite to who they actually are. It's one of the beauties of being in that profession. So yeah, it's very common to find in the arts introverted people. Because one of the other benefits of being introverted is creativity. Because of this disconnect between our society as such a high value on witty, humorous, social, sociable, charismatic people, is that introverted people that have a little bit of disconnect with how the world operates, they get to live two lives. One is how they're supposed to be. Because they see it all the time. You know, this information is coming to them. They're looking at the news. They're seeing what's being attractive to other people and then what they're experiencing. To see the relativity between those two worlds, a lot of creative juice is fired up. What if you're not an actress and you want to become more out there and lively? Can introverts train themselves to be more extroverted? Or at least be less jumpy at a loud party? Absolutely. Many of us, myself included, are perfectly capable of behaving as extroverts. You know, there's a difference between being an extrovert and behaving as an extrovert. A real extrovert in that behavior will get more and more energized. I can behave as an extrovert, but then I need some recovery time. It's not that introversion limits me. It defines me to some extent, but... Lots of us can get out there, and I call it putting on my dog and pony show. You know, I put on my clown nose and set the plate spinning, and I can be the life of the party for a certain amount of time, and then I'm ready to go into a quiet room and shut the door. No question. I mean, one thing is implementing plans ahead of time. When I used to see clients, I would tell them is, is set your car up with music that puts you in the right state of mind, the right mental framework before you walk out of your car because you can't control other people. You can't control what's going to hit you in terms of stimulation, but you can control the mindset that you're going to go into. Exercising every day, just gentle exercise, a little bit of yoga, a little bit of weight training, walking around your block and being out there in nature. It just calms your nervous system down so you can stay at this relaxed state for a longer period of time. You can read up on other strategies that can make life as an introvert a bit easier in Sophia Dembling's book, The Introvert's Way, available at bookstores and online. You can also visit her at sophiadembling.com. For more information on psychologist Todd Cashton and his research, he invites you to visit his site at toddkashdan.com. Of course, you can find out more about all of our guests on our site, viewpointsonline.net. I'm Gary Price. 